All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the recently revealed Game of the Year 2021 nominees, as well as some of the other major categories and what games are nominated for those categories. This was revealed today, and there's a lot of different uh, conversation and discussion happening around this, and I wanted to give my thoughts on it because I'm feeling a little bit baffled as to some of the things that I'm seeing here or not seeing, I guess you could say. And so I just wanted to talk about it, give my thoughts on it, and uh, just kind of have a discussion about this with you guys. So before we get into this, do me a favor, please hit the like button to help the video and show it your support and hit the subscribe button as well if you're new here to the channel. Now, before we go over uh, this list or this tweet storm as they're calling it over on the official game awards twitter i want to let you guys know how these games are selected and how they're voted upon i feel as though it's really important to understand that to get a better grasp on you know how we should or uh, how you should perceive this so this is reading from the official game awards uh, website it's the frequently asked question section and the first question is, how are nominees selected for the Game Awards? Nominees for most categories of the Game Awards are chosen by an international jury of over 100 global media and influencer outlets selected for their history of critical evaluation of video games. Specialized juries also convene for other categories, including esports and accessibility. Each voting outlet completes a confidential unranked ballot based on the collective and diverse opinion of its entire editorial staff. Uh, listing out its top five choices in each category. Ballots are tabulated, and the five games that appear on the most ballots are put forth as nominees. In the event of a tie, six or more nominees will be announced in a category. Game Awards producer Jeff Keighley is not a member of the jury and does not vote on the nominees or winners. The second question is, why do you use this jury to select the nominees? Given the sheer number of games released each year, as well as the extended time required to fully evaluate products, a voting outlet approach allows for the widest possible critical assessment. A ballot submitted to the Game Awards represents the collective opinion of an entire outlet. And finally, the question, who selects the winners? Winners are determined by a blended vote between the voting jury, which accounts for 90% of the vote, and public fan voting, which counts for 10% of the vote. Fans can vote for their favorite game on the GameAwards.com and also via social media platforms in select categories. Now, I wanted to be sure to go over that before I talk about this again, so that way everybody understands how this whole process works. Now, with that being said, we're going to take a look at the Game of the Year nominees for 2021. We have Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the first question that popped into my head when I saw this list and I saw the Game of the Year nominees is where's Returnal? Why is Returnal not nominated for Game of the Year? This genuinely baffles me. Returnal is my personal Game of the Year and I have many reasons why it's my Game of the Year, but I think objectively speaking, it's a great game. I think that it does a lot of things not just well, but really well. And I think that Housemark really stepped it up big time with Returnal. And I'm not trying to take anything away from any of the other games that are here and nominated for Game of the Year, but it's been a relatively weak year in general. I think pretty much everybody can agree on that. I don't think it's crazy to view Returnal as one of the major highlights of the year when it comes to major game releases. I've seen some people try to say that, oh, it's because it sold poorly. And that to me doesn't really make much sense. I mean, look, if a game sells poorly, it sells poorly. That should have no weight behind, you know, the quality of the game itself, right? And then I've seen some people saying, well, maybe it's because it's a difficult game. Now that actually makes more sense to me. And when I look at the process that is used to decide, you know, who gets nominated for Game of the Year, it became pretty clear to me that I think Returnal is is getting uh, snubbed a little bit here, or maybe even a lot. I, I think it's just absurd to look at this Game of the Year list, uh, the nominee list, and not see Returnal there, but to see, you know, Ratchet and Clank, Psychonauts 2, Deathloop, 
again, I'm not taking anything away from these games. Like, they're all great games and fine games. You know, Resident Evil Village, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread. But it, I just don't, I don't understand how Returnal cannot be up there with these games. Um, maybe it's just because, I don't know, I like the game more than most people, but I just think it's crazy. And, and I just don't, I, I just can't make sense of it. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Returnal's a very high quality game and anybody who's played it, and when I say played it, I mean people who've actually took the time to, I hate to use the term, but get good at the game. I was one of those people. This is a, it's a very difficult game. It's not the most accessible, that's for sure. It takes time and practice to get better at. And for some people, it takes a very long time. I mean, I remember when I got stuck on the third biome of this game, uh, which is about halfway through the game, it almost broke me to the point where I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to beat this. But then something clicked, I just kept trying and, you know, a little bit of perseverance. And I ended up not only completing the game, but getting the platinum trophy for it as well. And so, you know, I got the platinum for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I'm happy to see Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, but I just think it's it's crazy. I just think it's crazy. It's almost criminal, in my opinion, that Returnal is not nominated for Game of the Year. I feel that Housemark is being robbed here. Um, you know, I saw some people saying that a game like Forza Horizon 5 should be nominated for Game of the Year. Uh, maybe that's true. Um, you know, I, I think that it's... It's difficult if you're like a racing game for whatever reason, you know, to, to be nominated for game of the year. But uh, a lot of people are upset about that. And so that's like the first thing that I saw where I was just like, I, I don't I don't understand why this game isn't nominated. It need like it absolutely should be. I think Housemark earned it. And I think House I think Returnal is just as good, if not better, than any other game that's up here for you know, Game of the Year 2021 nomination. I really believe that. But if you scroll down this list, you'll see Returnal did get nominated for some things, such as Best Audio Design. Uh, we, we do have Forza Horizon 5 on there as well. Uh, there's Best Fighting Game, Best Indie, Best Esports Game, Best Mobile Game. There's a lot of this stuff that I'm not, you know, really paying much attention to. Best Action Adventure, Best Action Game. There's Returnal again. But there is something on here that I have to call out. And I am I was quite shocked when I saw this. I kind of couldn't believe it. And I'm not gonna lie, it, it really it really depressed me. Now you can see here we have best role playing game and best score in music. Now, best score in music, I'm not gonna pay much attention to because you know, uh, soundtracks are an integral part of any gaming experience, but certainly not the most important. And I could understand why a game like Cyberpunk 2077 is here for best score in music. I've heard a lot of people say great things about it, but my big problem is best role playing game, best RPG. We're looking at Cyberpunk 2077 making this list. This is staggering to me, okay? It's especially staggering, again, when you take into account the process in which these games are chosen and uh, nominated. I am almost in disbelief. But when you think about it, maybe it's not that hard to believe. The reason why I say this is because you have to assume that the overwhelming majority of people who are voting for this or, you know, filling out a ballot or whatever, it's pretty clear it's like mostly games media, it's influencers, people who, who were part of the review process of Cyberpunk 2077. And if you go back and look at that, for those who uh, may have forgotten, um, CD Projekt Red like purposely made sure that anybody who was reviewing the game was reviewing the PC version, which was the most finished version, the most complete version, uh, still certainly broken in many ways and nowhere near where it should be, but uh, definitely the best version at launch. Uh, they purposely made it so that you couldn't, uh, reviewers that is, could not experience this game on the consoles and do the review that way. And so that is why this is here, but I also believe that this is a serious problem. 
I know that there are going to be some people who want to tell me like how good Cyberpunk is and how there's a lot of aspects of it that are underrated and how the game got so much better and it's been improved after all this time. I don't care. The fact of the matter is, this is why this stuff continues to happen. Now, the only argument that I will entertain that I think is it's fair, but still, I feel like it doesn't necessarily equate to we have to give it a pass and then give it an award for best RPG, is somebody said, well, you know, the developers still did work hard on the game and it's not really the dev's fault, you know, or the artists that are working on the game that the executives and the people in charge and the management just made uh, terrible, terrible decisions. I do agree with that, you know, I, and I always feel bad for developers that have to, you know, suffer because the higher ups are just making, you know, boneheaded decisions. Um, but I, I still, I don't think that means that Cyberpunk 2077 should be nominated for best role playing. I mean, look, we're talking about game of the year awards. You're going to tell me that since the time Cyberpunk released last year, within the last 12 months, there isn't an RPG that is more deserving outside of the other four here that are listed alongside Cyberpunk that is more deserving to take its place. That's where I get really bothered because I know for a fact there are other RPGs that deserve to be uh, on this list here for best role playing and should absolutely take the place of Cyberpunk. It kind of disturbs me a little bit that there are so many people who were so quick to forget or to forgive what happened uh, with Cyberpunk. And it bothers me that it could potentially win this award because, you know, we always go through these cycles of, oh no, uh, why did they do this? Why do you think they did it? Why do you think the management and the higher ups at CD Projekt Red released this game knowing it was a complete mess because they thought they could get away with it? And this is exactly why uh, publishers and, and higher up executives, you know, people who are managing this stuff, this is exactly why they believe they can continue to get away with it because apparently they can. Not only can they sell 13 million copies of a completely broken, unfinished game that, you know, pretty much lied to the majority of people, but they can also have the chance at winning an award for best role playing game. This disturbs me so much more than the fact that Returnal isn't nominated for Game of the Year. Returnal not being nominated for Game of the Year, fine. I can deal with that. It is what it is. I think it's a huge mistake. I think it's crazy. But this is just unacceptable to me. And this is where I feel like Jeff Keighley, somebody, whoever's running the Game Awards, should really step in and, and, and really think about the integrity that these awards are supposed to have here and, um, and really rethink this. Uh, I, I think I think it's just sad, truly. I, I think it's sad, and I think it paints a a pretty bleak picture that we can look back a year ago at the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 and and look at everything that went down, and then flash forward one year later, it's being nominated for best role playing. You kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> It is what it is, I guess, guys. Uh, you know, I guess what this ultimately means for me. Uh, and I can only speak for me, is that when I do tune into the Game Awards and I stream them, I'm simply doing so for the announcements because this is ridiculous, man. <laughs> you know, uh, who cares? But yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to take a couple of minutes here to talk to you guys about. But that's going to do it for the video. Be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.